The video game world is one that's full of weapons. Some that are easy to get and plentiful, and some that are not. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, the 10 rarest weapons in video games. And number 10 is Golden Wrench from Team Fortress 2. One of the rarest weapons on this list is also one of the most controversial. Back in 2010, Valve released the Engineers update for TF2, which among other changes introduced the Golden Wrench. It functions exactly the same as the regular wrench, but has the added effect of turning people into gold if you manage to kill them with it. Now, what makes it so rare is that it was basically a promotional tool. Only a hundred of them actually dropped for players to craft, and with thousands of people trying to craft this thing at the same time, basically the only way for players to get it was to figure out how the rollout worked and start crafting at the exact moment a designated drop time happened. What makes this whole thing controversial is how some angry players got for missing out. People quickly started accusing anyone who had one uh, to be a cheater. So even people who got them legitimately, which was probably most of them, frankly, would generally try to keep them a secret. Even though a hundred of them were released, there aren't nearly as many of them left nowadays. Valve gave out an additional golden wrench during a charity stream, bringing the count up to 101. But at least as far as I can tell, players have intentionally destroyed at least 21 of them. And one was actually removed by Valve. So they're even rarer than they were. And number nine is the Sword of Dorman from the Shadow of the Colossus remake. There's plenty of stuff like the Team Fortress weapon on this list, but for now let's switch over to something that in the grand scheme isn't as rare, but is definitely incredibly hard to get. Added in the PS4 remake of Shadow of the Colossus, the Sword of Dorman is an incredibly difficult piece of equipment to get. Uh, to unlock the weight of this weapon, you have to collect 79 gold coins. Uh, they're scattered around the world, and in most games that's not that big of a deal, you know? Like, a collection quest like this wouldn't be a to write home about, but in this game, oh, it's an ordeal. First off, the world map is totally massive, there's a ton of empty space, and these coins can be hidden literally anywhere. The developers of the remake got pretty creative with it too, and managed to hide these things in the most unbelievably obscure places. The only thing the game does is give you a total of how many you found too. So. And like it doesn't mark anything on the map. It's just up to you to keep track of everything that you've already found. So you pretty much have to use a guide. That's what it really comes down to. And even with a guide, finding all these coins is... It's tough. It takes a long time, and it is really tedious. Now, it is the strongest sword in the game, but I don't know. I, I don't know that it's worth it for any reason other than saying you got it. Like, I think the main reason to get it is just bragging rights. Its merits as a sword just don't really matter, you know? And number eight is Excalibur 2 from Final Fantasy IX. Like, Final Fantasy games love hard-to-get weapons. And there's so many, you could easily make an entire list just using examples from this series. But let's focus on this one from Final Fantasy IX. Um, this weapon is infamous. What makes it so hard to get is not just that it's a low drop rate or was only given out in a promotion. It's just that accomplishing what you have to do is super difficult. Kind of like the Shadow Colossus one. To obtain Excalibur 2, apparently the sequel to Excalibur, a weapon that's apparently even better than Excalibur, you gotta reach a room in the final dungeon without exceeding 12 hours of playtime. Uh, keep in mind, this is one of the longer Final Fantasy games, so most players take about 40 hours, uh, give or take, so beating it in just 12, wow, that's a lot faster. That's almost a quarter of the average playtime, a little bit more. Basically, the only way you can do this is cheat a little bit. Game has got a ton of cutscenes, and on the PS1 original, they can't be skipped unless you use a trick and open and close the PlayStation disc to cause the FMV to skip, which was the only way to save that precious time. To put just how difficult this is into perspective, the world record speedrun of the game with no glitches is about 8 hours and 37 minutes. That's the fastest player in the world, so you have to approach that time. Yeah, it's about 3-4 hours longer in terms of your time limit, but still. And number seven is the Sword of Kings from Earthbound. In general, Earthbound, a pretty forgiving game, you know? Compared to everything else on this list, the drop rate on this weapon, not that bad either. Uh, but don't tell that to anyone who's trying to get it. The drop rate on the Sword of Kings is 1 in 128, so 0.8%. It is, I mean, gonna take a lot of grinding. There's a few weapons in Earthbound with, uh, like, a similar drop rate, but... What makes this weapon stand out is it's the only weapon in the game Pooh can equip, literally the only one, and the only way to get it is through random chance fighting enemies in the Stonehenge base. To make matters worse, you can permanently miss it, because once you finish the Stonehenge base, that's it. 
you you never can come back. It's it's over. That's kind of what makes it so infamous among players. It felt necessary to a lot of people, and it's rare. It can only be obtained in a certain area, and that area closes once you're done. In reality, it's hardly necessary to beat in the game. Uh, Earthbound's, like I said, pretty easy for the most part, but missing this thing can make it feel like you're missing out. In terms of rareness, everything else on this list has got this weapon beat, but there's just something about it that makes the actual odds not matter so much. What matters is that it feels totally impossible to get, even if it isn't necessarily. <laughs> And number six is the Pendulum of Doom from World of Warcraft. Uh, we're far from World of Warcraft experts here, so the information on this entry is mostly coming from a Reddit post by Poor Owl from about a year ago, chronicling their quest to get this weapon. And suffice to say, it, uh, it took a while, specifically three and a half years of dedicated grinding, which is nuts for a single weapon. The Pendulum of Doom is, of course, incredibly strong for its level, but the chances of it dropping are totally minuscule, like 0.06% from one specific enemy type in the Alderman Dungeon, or 0.02% from a few more. And those are crazy small chances. It took Poor Owl 2,000 runs in retail and 292 in Classic WoW, where it is actually a little easier to find. Apparently, they could have just bought one early on, too, uh, but they wanted the satisfaction of earning one themselves. And after three and a half years of trying to get just one weapon, I, I'm going to say I probably would regret that decision. It's just me. I'm not judging. I'm just saying how I would feel. And number five is the Dreamcast mag, uh, Fantasy Star Online 1 and 2, uh, it's both in. Calling it a weapon is a little borderline, but it, uh, it counts, I think at least. In Fantasy Star Online, you can equip these things called mags, which are small creatures that you can feed items to. The weapon part is they have a special photon blast that charges up when they take damage. Kind of a stretch, but it's so weird, it's, I think, worth talking about. I mean, it's a Dreamcast that you can equip. Uh, to get it, you need a bunch of rare items that are difficult to get on their own. Uh, they only appear during certain holiday events, and uh, that's tough enough, right? But the real rare versions of these things are in the sequel. The only way to get a Dreamcast mag in Fantasy Star Online 2 is either to have gone to a 2015 fan convention that was in Japan, or play the closed Xbox One beta test in 2020. These things are so rare that they might as well not exist. There's at least some video evidence of the Dreamcast mag on YouTube, yes. Uh, but this entry is interesting because it's something that's not only incredibly rare, but something not many people actually care about. It goes to show that not everything that's rare is necessarily sought after. And number four, the Sightengrat bow from Final Fantasy XII. In terms of pure rarity, doesn't get a lot more ridiculous than this bow from Final Fantasy XII. The layers of rareness on this are, are mind-blowing, so strap in. For one, it's in an invisible chest that only has a 1% chance of appearing on the Sky Fairy. You'd think that would be enough, but no. Even if the chest actually appears, the chances of it actually containing an item, just 20%. That's, of course, not the chances of the bow appearing in the chest, but the chances that an item will be in the chest. To get the bow, you pretty much have to have the diamond armlet equipped because for whatever reason it raises your chances of finding this thing all the way up to a whopping 5%. So you got a 1% chance of finding a chest that has a 5% chance of having the bow. Also, it's invisible. So really, you've got a 1 in 10,000 chance of getting it, uh, if you hate yourself. If you'd rather not torture yourself, it's possible to exploit the game's RNG to make it to the bow will spawn every time. Uh, but the method reads like a fever dream. But hey, that's RNG manipulation for you, isn't it? And number three is Death's Web from Diablo 2, uh, which has some pretty ridiculous drop rates on certain items. Probably the most infamous is uh, Tyrell's Might. That's up there with the rarest equipment in the entire game. But we're talking about weapons here. In general, rare weapons are more likely to be found than uh, other pieces of equipment. But you never know from looking at the kind of percentages some of these weapons have. Uh, maybe the worst, at least when it comes to these weapons, is Death's Web. A uh, necromancer wand that has some unique properties, but what really makes it special is just how rare it is. Use the silo spend drop calculator for Diablo 2. This weapon can be dropped from a multitude of sources, but the actual chances of seeing it, pretty abysmal. Seriously, the highest number I could find was a shocking 1 in 13 million, or about 0.000075%, uh, which is insane. And actually, it only gets worse from there. Compare that to the uncommon chances of death, and those are way more likely to happen. The chances of being eaten by a shark, like 1 in 3.7 million. Chances of getting directly hit by a meteor, and we're talking in real life, uh, 1 in 1.9 million. 
Hell, you got a better chance of being struck by lightning uh, with uh, 1 in 1.2 million. Almost 10 times less likely than legitimately finding a death's web. Uh, that's that's probably a little too rare to even have in the game, honestly. Yeah, people get struck by lightning. It's in the news from time to time. But, like, it's technically more newsworthy if somebody gets a death's web. And number two is the gold magnate from EVE Online. Uh, everyone's favorite player-driven economy can be pretty fascinating to watch from the outside, but it's got to be pretty stressful to actually play, right? Some of these ships are super expensive and beyond rare. Uh, anything in the Titan class is going to cost a ton of real-world cash to keep running, too. Uh, but nothing compares to the Gold Magnate, a special frigate that sold for around $32,500 back in 2020. Like, for one, crazy rare. There's only two known to exist in the game currently. The first one was given out as a reward back in 2003 for winning a championship, and that was eventually destroyed by pirates. There were four, however, given out in 2006. One was destroyed by the owner when they decided to quit the game. Another was caught in a trap and destroyed. Uh, and unlike pretty much everything else on this list, there's a real danger to losing these things in the game. Even though they were free rewards technically, there's still a lot to lose considering how much one managed to sell for in 2020. And finally, at number one, Final Fantasy XI's The Excalibur, which you get from fishing. So here we go. This is a weapon so rare that literally no one has actually managed to get it. The only reason anyone even knows the weapon existed is because a developer talked about it. Basically, when Final Fantasy XI first came out in Japan, they made it so you could randomly fish, uh, and the fishing would let you pull up this incredibly powerful weapon at random. But chances were very low, one in 20 thousand or 0 0.005 percent and even if they did manage to find one they wouldn't be able to use it because the weapons level was at 70 and the game had a level cap of 50. now they've looked at the data and they found that literally no person has managed to find this weapon and it was probably patched out at some point so it's a rare weapon that literally no one in the world has like maybe a developer or somebody has it in secret but there's really no way to know unless somebody comes out and admits that they've got it uh, because otherwise it's literally a weapon that is so rare that no one has it and it kind of sounds like they removed Excalibur from fishing when they added the relic version of the weapon which was before Final Fantasy 11 even came out in the US back in October of 2003 and that's probably a major reason it was never found nobody knew the weapon even existed and combining the low discovery rate with the relatively small player base it just isn't a, a, a situation conducive to somebody finding it you know like maybe there's one or two floating around out there right now but unless somebody actually comes comes out and says it we're just gonna assume literally no one ever found it it doesn't get much rarer than that does it no and that's all for today probably a great place to end on leave us a comment if you like this video click like if you're not subscribed now's a good time to do so we upload brand new videos every day of the week best way to see them first is a subscription so do that enable notifications and as always we thank you very much for watching this video i'm falcon you can follow me on twitter falcon hero we'll see you next time right here on game ranks